Welcome to Face the Facts. We're in the month of October, and that means it's playoff time. It's amazing. We actually can say that we're in the playoffs after three years. I'm Nick Face. I'm Phil Healy. Hello. As you can tell, I'm like shaking because I'm so <laughs> excited that the Red Sox are in the playoffs. Uh, well, last night you should be excited if you saw that game. Oh, well, it's, it's been a, an amazing ride, first of all, for the Red Sox to get there, but before we start talking about the Red Sox, we have to talk about there was a game that was last night. Now they just know when the show was sure. being taped, of course. Well, surprise, surprise. The wild card game was amazing between the Baltimore mm -hmm. Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. But we want to say, I'm sure the Red Sox would, would be the ones that should thank or the Blue Jays and the Orioles should be the ones to thank the Red Sox and putting <laughs> yeah. them in that situation yeah. and because the Red Sox it, lost yeah. five or six their last week of play. Yep. But this game had everything on the line. Yeah. Beautiful game. We had home runs by traditional guys that were probably going to get home runs. Mm -hmm. You had Jose Batista getting a home run. You had Mark Trumbo for the Orioles hitting his home run. And then to win the game, the guy that will, re will replace David Ortiz, Edwin <laughs> Encarnacion, hits the game-winning home run. Overall thoughts on that game? And I know we haven't brought up the major thing, but overall as a oh, whole. Okay. Uh, I, to be honest, I only, uh, weirdly, I couldn't find it. I know where it was. I'm yep. like, oh, TBS. And I actually was doing a lot of stuff, but I caught the top of the 10th is when yeah. I got in. Yeah. And I, that's not all you need to get to, but uh, up until I was like, it was crazy. 2-2 two, two tie. Yeah. Yep. And I, uh, I think O'Day was pitching. Yep, Darren yeah. O'Day, Submariner. Yeah. and it was Kind of yeah. like the Ziggler for oh, us. Yep, I love his delivery. It's yep. great. And... Um, it was great deep on both ends, yep. and uh, I was nuts, man. And the announcer just came in like, oh, the Orioles hadn't had a hit since the sixth inning. Yep. And it's like, oh, and you could tell, and I, this was, I'm planting this seed so when we talk about it later, because I know you're going to bring it up, yep. how Oreo was kind of slip, the Orioles were slipping. Yes. And it's just like, yes. the more you get an extra inning, especially in a playoff game that isn't in your, your house, like, you're just kind of playing your... Anything goes. Anything goes, but also you're at the end of your rope, really. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to give everything in that game. But... Yeah, and this is... Yeah. <laughs> everything yeah. was not given. No. And that's by the Baltimore Orioles. Buck Showalter is the manager of the Orioles. And before we trash him... No, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Or Buck. He's probably going to get AL Manager of the Year. He should. He, he could. He should, I mean, man. He, the way he was able to manage a team that really didn't have much for a starting pitching or Excuse didn't me. really have much of a, a a lineup outside of hitting the home run ball for the most part, yeah. was able to get to that wild card playoff game. There's a problem, though. Buck Showalter elected to keep the best relief pitcher in the game who was 47 for 47 in save opportunities yeah. with a 0 0.54 earned run average. That's Zach Britton. How can you not put him in the game? Well, you need to hit the ball first. I yes, mean, you I do. Know that's the, I know we, we were talking about it briefly before, and I, yep. I do disagree with you on your stance, like put him in. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he needs that lead. Like you were saying, yep. he needs it. And if he didn't have it, if you put Britton in, maybe that saves you an inning or two, but does yep. it only just stave off elimination for another inning? You mm -hmm. definitely needed to hit the ball. And uh, Toronto, to their credit, their bullpen was fan was better, the better bullpen of Everybody. the night, if you want to look at it. Even with Osuna going yeah. out, he got, came out for, for an injury. Yeah. They had to pull him. But overall, that bullpen for Toronto got the job done. For the Orioles, I mean, I look at Buck Showalter right now with like five eyeballs out of my head and say, mm -hmm. I know you have your opinion on it, but I, I, I don't know how you can keep the best relief pitcher in the game from not entering the game at the time, and to pitch multiple innings. Yeah. If, if that were John Farrell, if John Farrell sure. had done that in that game last night, if the Red Sox were playing, what would happen today? He would, I, you know what, and that's an honest, honest question. He'd probably be fired or something yep. of that accord. I mean, I don't think Buck should be fired or will be fired, but I mean, I understand why you wouldn't do it because your closer is there to close. Yep. I know you throw, he's, he's their best relief pitcher or arguably their best pitcher Correct. to put there. You put him there, what happens they win, then the, the next game he won't be available because when's the next game right. they're playing? On Thursday? Their next game would be Thursday. It yeah. would be against the Rangers. Yes. So would he be available to pitch? The crazy part that, that, that really got to me after the game was knowing that Britton had got up in the eighth inning. He was mm -hmm. warming up. He was loose. 
and they said be available at any point when runners come on. Now, I'm fine with what they did with Darren O'Day when they had the 9th and 10th and 11th, yeah. and they put him out there in that situation. I'm fine with that. But once you put a runner on, which was Brian Dunsing and – Ubaldo Jimenez, just completely not getting their job done. You had runners at, I believe, first and third before that two, before that three-run home run was hit. Before, yeah, uh, the runners were all from Jimenez because there was yep. an out. There was one out. In so the, Dunsing had got out the out. The so it was all from Jimenez. Yeah. Yeah. So he's the one that allowed the two to get on. Two hit, three straight hits. At that point, including the home run, yeah. knowing that there was one out and you had runners at first and third, yeah. I strongly feel that that was your time where you put in your guy. You know what? I mean, to save it all and to not kind of risk it, yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, at, and you're right. At that point, you can't, you know, it's this or nothing. Or yep. you go home. So it might as well put him out. But I do understand. Because I completely yeah. get your point on sure. keeping on keeping him out there to make sure you can preserve to get that save. Yeah. Totally understand that. But I think in the in the desperation situation that they created upon themselves with runners on, who do you feel more comfortable with, Hibald Jimenez yeah. or or Zach Britton? Well, especially, I mean, not and you shouldn't isolate it. Don't I mean like, no? Because it, it, you're leading with the history of those past two bat, uh, the two batters. So, yeah. and the way that he threw it around there, mm -hmm. it, what was it? It was actually, and I love this. I love that Pedro Martinez is a commentator. Yes, he's, he's fantastic. He is fantastic. And um, Nesson should hire him. No, <laughs> yeah, and he put it best, like you know, when Jimenez not to be an echo chamber for him, but when uh, Jimenez. Threw that first pitch and almost hit um, the Toronto batter. And I apologize. Probably um, third baseman Donaldson. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it, it might have been Donaldson, but yep. it almost hit him. And you're just kind of like, oh, all right. Does he have a command of it? Then he's trying to kind of find yep. himself. Maybe he got lost in the moment there. Right. So that's a, that Pedro said. Maybe that's a telltale sign. The rest of them, you know, that they should have had somebody ready to go. Should have had somebody ready to go. Or yeah. should, uh, you know, like catch well, it, another thing too to with down, with Evaldo you know? Jimenez is he was a starting pitcher. I mean, yeah. coming in as a relief pitcher, that's a new thing that they that they asked him to do for the playoff situation that they were in. So yeah. he's a guy that's usually not had his best control throughout, at least from this year, yeah. when he, as he's been an Oriole. The amazing thing to me, outside of Britain not coming in or anything, for Jimenez, the guy on deck which was not Edwin Encarnacion, it was Jose Batista, who was oh. waiting on deck, career oh. hitting against him, three for 38, and they pitched oh, wow. to Encarnacion. And he had a base open. If they didn't want to have Britain come in, mm -hmm. again, completely understand that. But if you have that base open and a guy's three for 38 against you, you take your chance there. Yeah. And that's another thing that they just crashed and burned on. I will say that. I mean, that is something I was you definitely give him. floored when uh, I heard that stat for. come out. Yeah. But, I didn't hear a 3 for 38, but, I mean, I do understand, like, if Encarcion. Um, is, he had is, beat them already, I yeah. guess, already on the walk-off from before, too. So yeah, it was like kind a, of. Within the month? Or kind of like it? deja vu, within yeah. the month. Yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, if you were rooting for the yeah. Orioles, their season's done. Blue Jays, Rangers, that's going to be one heck of a series. And I heard, rumor Bloody has battle. it, the Secret Service is going to be there to make sure these teams behave themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've had a long history. This is from, I'm sure you remember it, when Odor punched Jose Batista. Yeah. So these teams do not like each other no. at all. They're so Flipping the bat last year. Flipping the bats and throwing things on fields. And <laughs> yep. it's going to be Happened everything to you ever night. wanted for in that five-game series yeah. or best-of-three series. Yeah. Um, no matter what it comes down to, they have to win whatever teams there is three. Next amount, yeah. Now, tonight's game is the Giants versus the Mets. This game is, in my eyes, probably one of the best one-game winner-takes-all winner games has ever been. Yeah. You have Madison Bumgarner versus Noah Syndergaard, two of the top pitchers in the game, f yeah. battling it out to yeah. figure out who's going to advance to go play the Cubs. Go play the Cubs, the best team in... Uh, baseball, arguably. So that that game will be um, later tonight. Now that game, the National League is played on ESPN and MLB Network. Thank you the for American me know. League is on <laughs> TBS. TBS. So yeah. please make sure that you know about that too. Well, I thought it was ESPN last night and or um, Fox or something. Yeah, oh. Fox takes over for the American the League Championship oh, okay. series. Right. Uh, excuse me, the National League Championship oh, okay. series. TBS has the American League series okay. this year. And who has the, uh, Fox has the World Series? Fox too? does the World Series. So yeah. TBS, ESPN, MLB, they're all in one. Yeah, Check yeah. your local listings. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, or Red Sox. Radio, yeah. yeah, or listen on the radio. Red Sox. We've got to be talking about them. Okay. First time in, since 2013. Okay. We all know what happened then when they won the mm-hmm. World Series since we've been in the playoffs. Yeah. How do you feel about the team going into the playoffs right now? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'll have to see that first game. I yeah. think with, what they did was great. They rattled off 11 out of 12. Sure. And they kind of they pretty much clinched it. And then they kind of uh, coasted a little bit. And uh, maybe Kimbrell was kind of weird. Or maybe, I think we talked about this last time. Yep. How it just kind of, um, or did we get to talk about him? I'm not sure if we I got a chance to talk about did. him because he's. We talked about him, but not that game against the Yankees. He's been yeah. shaky. He's somebody. Was it just that game or was it another game? It's been other games too. I mean, it was the, one of the games this weekend at Fenway. Oh, no, and it was also a game against New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to talk about that game for a second yeah, sure. before go we go it. anywhere into the playoffs. Yeah. I just want to say, yes, fantastic job for the Red Sox getting American League Championship uh, for American division, League East yeah. Championship for the division. Great job. Winning 11 straight and beating the Orioles, sweeping them, sweeping the Yankees, yeah. sweeping the Rays was better than anybody could have ever expected. It was one of the toughest schedules that they had in September. I get that 100%. Here's what I don't get. Okay, I have a a do's and don'ts list. Mm-hmm. Going into the Yankee series, you needed to clinch one game, basically, mm-hmm. to get the American League, uh, the, the, the East Championship. Yeah. Did you see the game where they lost on that walk-off Grand Slam against Mark Teixeira? I did. That was the game Craig Kimbrell imploded. A little bit, Granted, yeah. there was, you know, weather was one of the issues that was going mm-hmm. on. There was a little rainy. Kimbrell just couldn't find the strike zone. Mm-hmm. He was a mess. The Yankees ended up winning, and they get to celebrate at home plate. Looked like they're almost like they won the World Series. Well, guess what? The Red Sox also got to celebrate after the game because they won the championship. Because Baltimore beat I Toronto. I have never right? seen anything like that before yeah. in my life. A team celebrating after a terrible, yeah. terrible loss against your arched enemy, the mm-hmm. Yankees. What are your feelings on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, they made it. I mean, they, they won Did the Did they division. deserve to celebrate after the game after losing? Yeah, they can do whatever they want. Okay. I mean, it's just kind of like if they won that division, they have more every right to celebrate it, whether yeah. they felt that game was a good way to go out on it. I mean, that's mm-hmm. another one. And who knows, like, because I think they found out when Kimberl like, either just got on the mound sure. or right before – like the bottom of that inning, I forget. I forget when exactly it happened, but I remember it correlated with him just kind of, because I think he got an out or two, and then he walked. No, he, he got nothing. He got nothing. He got nothing. He Joe walked. Kelly got two outs. They brought him in. Oh, so there okay. was two outs then, and then he gave up that grand slam. Oh, so okay. Kimbrell did know that oh, they had right. clinched. No, Joe right. Kelly did not. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Kimbrell uh, loaded the bases. Yes. And Joe Kelly got two straight outs, right? Correct. And, and then that's when the crazy. shot came and yeah. went over the fence. See, this is why I love to debate and, and to, ar- and to no, argue yeah. different points. That, that's one of the reasons but why the, I love what we do face to face. That could make for Joe Kelly, though. Exactly. In a lot of ways. For me, if I was the manager, yeah. and you have your opinion, I'm going to have mine. I'm more laissez-faire. No okay. way would you have celebrated that yeah. game. I would have told my team, as the leader, mm-hmm. you go celebrate after you win the ball game at Fenway Park. Yeah. I thought the way that was handled was despicable. Yeah. I just do not agree with losing a game of that magnitude, whether you won the division or not. Sure. Hold your celebration until you go out there and you win the game in front of your fans at Fenway Park, I mean, which they could have done Friday night yeah. after David Ortiz hit that game-winning game, game sure. uh, winning home run and, and won 5-3. to three. They could have done it right there. Well, I mean, Celebrate you... with your fans and people that want to see that. All right. I mean, I yeah. think that's a little too... Um, Maybe like, I'm too harsh. Harsh, but I also think it's like a fantasy element to it. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like they did it. They, they, they went through the gauntlet of winning those yeah. games. And they won the division. It was one of the tougher, di- toughest divisions in baseball. I completely agree it. on that. Uh, yeah. The fashion of, of how it came to be, mm-hmm. I mean, wasn't the best. And I'm sure they didn't feel great about it. I mean, the look on their faces when they went into the locker room wasn't... Uh, that uh, impressive. Now, do you know why they got the permission to celebrate? Oh, I didn't know you needed permission. Oh, they got permission. You know who the permission came from? Uh, Zabrowski? Bozo the Clown, John Farrell. Oh, really? Is that what we're calling him? That's what I want to call him. See, my eyes, even with the Red Sox getting into the playoffs right now and feeling good about themselves, I don't feel good about the manager at all still. I don't. 
I, I don't trust down. him right now. Yeah. I don't. I don't trust how he's going to manage the bullpen in Cleveland, and I do not mean to be pessimistic about it. Yeah, I'm, I want to be optimistic want. about it. But I saw way too much concern last week, yeah. whether they gave up, whether they said decided they're going to pack it in, who cares yeah. about the rest of the regular season. I hope that switch is turned on when it lights up tomorrow night well, when that game goes on. I mean, there might, you know, there might and be. And I hope it does. And I want to be wrong on it. Sure. I do. But right now, leading into the playoff, I, I, I don't feel good about this series right now. Well, I don't. Who, who pitched? I mean, I don't think, I think you're going from one extreme to the next. I am. I mean, you can keep a middle ground about it and let it know, like, let it be known that, yeah, they pitched Henry Owens for one of those games. They did. Weekend. That that so, game I mean, against New York, like, that was a game that they completely... Oh, was that New York? Or was that was a New York game on that yeah. Thursday. Oh, okay. Now, so like Farrell, half, yeah. Farrell did not really rest many of the guys Friday, okay. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. He went out there. And the reason why he did this is because they had three, day, three consecutive days off, Monday, yeah. Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He felt that giving guys the whole rest of last week or the weekend off would interrupt their timing, their swings, Maybe, their play, yeah. their ability. So he elected to go with a couple innings you play and then sit out. Mm -hmm. The problem is he didn't really rest many of his guys. What you saw out there was what you're going to see with the Indians. So mm -hmm. now basically, even with that 11-game streak, the Tampa series alone, their offense kind of went downhill. As soon mm -hmm. as Baltimore ended, we've been down the downhill for about two weeks. The offense better start clicking because if not, it's going to be a very quick exit. Yeah, Cleveland has some really great pitching. They do. And uh, I don't think we can hit good pitching that well. No, it's not just the good pitching that they yeah. have. Their bullpen has yeah. shut down arms. Andrew Miller, Cody Allen as their mm -hmm. closer. The, 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 the key to the whole thing is Terry Francona. Yeah. You know, I know for a proven fact that Terry Francona wants to beat the Red Sox with oh, a yeah. – he, uh, he's on a mission. Yeah, why wouldn't he? He wants to stick it right to them and the Red yeah. Sox bosses and says, you know what? You did not do the right thing. I should still be the manager here. Do you think Granted, he was... he's happy in Cleveland. Yeah, I think, he, I think it all worked out for that, but I, I don't disagree. Like It probably would be a feather in his cap if he, if he uh, gave an early exit to both the Red Sox and David Ortiz, who Ortiz kind of wanted him out too. Yes. That's kinda, he kind of ushered him out a little bit. Now here's another interesting note on the pitching staff of the Red Sox upcoming. We'll have Rick Porcillo as your ace mm -hmm. to start, and that will be what for tomorrow night's what game. What do you think about that? I th totally just think that he should be one. Totally. Totally. I, I did not like David Price pitching whatsoever this year. Oh, yeah. Not I all. don't think David Price is a Boston Red Sox. I just oh, don't. All right. I, I would much rather prefer John Lester. Unfortunately, i got to deal with it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still in the John Lester camp. I think yeah. that every time... David Price takes that mound. I just think, yeah. you know what? That could be John Lester for a yeah. lot cheaper, too. They Probably. really goofed up on that. Yeah. What I do I like do what I do like on this team, though, right now is how much depth they have. On paper, yeah. they are the most talented team entering playoff in the National and American League. Oh, really? You think they have, the Cubs? They have a great chance at winning. Yes, I do, outside of the Cubs. The reason yeah. I say no on the Cubs, haven't won 108 years. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. That that's one reason why I say, well, you can be it, as yeah. good as you want, but you got to go out and prove it and win it. So the Red Sox, to me, have the best chance at winning, but that mm -hmm. means all the cards have to fall correctly, and it's going to take the starting pitching to actually physically get a win yeah. this postseason. Off air before our show began, I told Phil the Red Sox starting pitching that consists of Rick Porcillo, David Price. Mm -hmm. Clay Buchholz, Eduardo Rodriguez, heck, Stephen Wright, if he's yeah. even back. Drew oh, yeah, Pomeranz, right. you can put him in there, Drew, too. Well, Drew Pomeranz will be in the bullpen. Here's a great stat for all of our people at home, in there case you, you wanted to really hammer this in. Mm -hmm. You know how many wins the, all those pitchers combined have in the playoffs? How many? Zero. Not one. Zero. Wow. No, like they, none of them have, and I think I asked you, Buchholz, it doesn't have a decision. Some of them have pitched in the playoffs, but absolutely. Pitch in a win. But they do not have a win as a starting so, pitcher. Like, but that can be deceptive, too, because uh, Buckholz did pitch, what was that, the game four against the Cardinals in yes, the World Series? Yes, he did, Series. and he they had actually, four innings pitched and pitched pretty decently. He did. He had like yep. two or three hits or like a run. Yep, I mean, he and was hurt from that point. Oh yeah. seven, I believe Clay Buckholz was hurt from, so he wasn't really a part of that. Oh, yeah. Oh eight, he was also hurt. This is the first playoffs, really, that he's been healthy. Do you think, I mean, is he your number three? 
Yes, Clay Buckle to be number three. I think the, you do that because of his veteran status on the yeah. team. And he actually he turned the really corner. Well. Yeah. Turned the corner. I was very happy with that, and it's been yeah. a big boost for the staff that needed he him. Pitched like seven or eight innings at a time too. That's yep. kind of the bigger thing too. Yeah, he had a, a like a three-five ERA. He was three and zero as a starter. The second yeah. half uh, did great. So yeah. you can't can't ask for more from there. I just hope that things continue to click. They had a great regular season. We need to see them turn it up a notch in the playoffs. I think they will. Yeah. I think they will. I think you'll see some David Ortiz uh, fire and passion thrown into some of these games. I think that you're going to really need to see Mookie Betts take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. Xander Bogarts needs to start swinging the bat better because he's yeah. been very much on the down. Jackie Bradley, I am so down on right now. Yeah. He needs to really turn the corner. I think what you, the people that you need to count on the most are your veterans that are there. That's Ortiz, yeah. Pedroia, and a little bit of Betts can go a long way yeah. if they can stay hot. Pedroia. Hanley Ramirez being the wild card. Yeah. If he can continue staying hot and productive like he did, yeah. it's going to be a good, solid postseason run for the Sox. Sure. And Petey has been, you know, Petey. Petey has been great this whole year. He's been yes, good. he has. Um, overall, how do you think the Red Sox will finish? I mean, I, I think they can make it to the World Series. Yep. Uh, without much of a fight. And maybe I say that as more of a homer. But no, but I think they really have. I think their bullpen yep. and their the questionable aspect is they're hitting good pitching for mm -hmm. me. Because I think their bullpen actually with Koji, Kimbrell, and uh, Ziggler. Yep. And throw in Pomerantz, Joe Andrew Kelly, Kelly, or Stephen Wright. Yep. Or, uh, you know, or even Eduardo Rodriguez, depending if yep. you have the three starters. And this rotation is... Um, you know, you have Price, you have Palmer, uh, you have uh, Porcello, you have Price, Price, and right now Buckholz and, and Rodriguez. And Buckholz, yeah. Yep. Then say Rodriguez doesn't start a fourth game. Say they bring that they back. throw him into the pen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you have you have some pretty good options there, and I, I like I, I like their chances. I do like game. their chances. I do. I, do. I mean, if if, you, if I, I was to ask you too. right now who I thought would go to the World Series, I'd say Red Sox, yeah. and I'd say Cubs. Those, that that would sure. be my matchup right there. I think it's going to be the Giants, weirdly enough. I think because of Bumgarner, it's all I up know. to this game tonight. I what? mean, Bumgarner, I would never, no ever, ever second-guess him in the playoffs. No one beats him in he the playoffs. He is the best postseason pitcher that there ever has been. Yeah, yeah, it's, what's, it's, it's insane. His numbers are staggering, yeah. mind-boggling. It's unbelievable what he can do. And that's why two years ago, 2014, I wanted Kansas City to send that guy on. They wanted to send yep. him home because yep. you weren't going to get another hit off him. No, they weren't. No. You just weren't. No. So, overall, so that's, what, that's, my, that's what we both think here for yeah. the playoffs. I mean, by no means am I trying to be pessimistic or well, anything with the team. Are, they're, 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 they're definitely facts that you want to throw out there mm. in case something doesn't go right. <laughs> We're covering ourselves. If something yeah. does go right, it's because the team is clicking. They need to click, catch fire, yeah. catch lightning in a bottle, and deliver yeah. for the most part. Um, outside of the other series that might be happening, we know we have the Cubs. I think the Cubs will end up facing the Giants. I think that's very – well, I mean, as far as like, yeah. And I, I know the, the Nationals time. were going to play the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. And right now we know it's going to be Texas versus the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. Who will the Red Sox face in round two if the Red Sox do get out of the first round? Uh, I mean, I think they're going to face the Blue Jays. I mean, okay. I don't, I, I'm not as familiar with Texas, but I don't think Texas, uh, as, from what I do know, Texas yeah. doesn't seem to have the overall depth of pitching that the Blue pitching Jays have. Pitching shaky. They had a yeah. little bit of uh, a hiccup with guys getting hurt. They do have Cole Hamels, Cole who's Hamels. very good. They, they do have, have um, you Darvish is the other guy yep. that's over there. And don't they still have, what's his name from... And the other starter from Philly they grab? Other starter from Philly. Or am I thinking? Well, I do know that they have Carlos Beltran added in there for offense, and oh, they do okay. have the catcher that was from Milwaukee, oh, Jonathan yep, yep. Lucroy. Yep. So their offense is high powered. And that Beltre. also has Adrian Beltre, who I've yep. always been a fan of. Yep. Um, that's a team that has a lot of force yep. right there. And that could very well be the matchup. I personally... And they're the best record in the AL, too. So I personally I mean, think it's going to be Rangers-Red Sox. Really? I yeah. do. I think it's going to be Rangers-Red Sox in okay. that series. I do. I think that from the Indians... Now, one of the things that's interesting about the Indians... Yes, they do have a great pitching staff. Yeah. The problem is that their pitching staff is all hurt. Trevor yeah. Bauer is really the number four starter that's going to have to go up against Porcillo tomorrow night. Yeah. That's because um, Danny Salazar... 
and another one of their starters is out. They're hurt. Indefinitely? Or? Indefinitely. Oh, wow. um, and another, another one that they're asking to be too is Corey Kluber, mm-hmm. who's had a kind of a downward trend after he had won the Cy Young two years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Red Sox really do have an advantage over that. The problem, actually not the problem, what they have to do is the offense has to score runs early yeah. because you're not going to score runs in the 6th, 7th, or 8th, or ninth inning with Andrew Miller and the Cody Allen out there for the Indians. Yeah. It's going to be very tough to battle it out. So that's what, I, what my feelings are on what I think that's going to happen. And then we also have Phil's. What's, what's I mean, cool is we both agree on most yeah. likely Red Sox uh, getting to the World Series. Yeah, I, I think that's a good – I think they have the depth to do it. I, mean, I think maybe their bullpen – might give up stuff. I think actually, Porcello might, you know, knock on wood. But I think Porcello might actually give up three or four runs in the start. I yep. mean, because the last couple starts, I think he gave up like two or three to the Yankees. Yep. Or he always gives up about two, two or three. Yeah, two or three, which I is mean, a quality start. No, it's a good. It, don't get me wrong, but I mean, I think also we might not have a shutdown guy. I mean, Price might get to shutdown status. Mm-hmm. I think Rodriguez actually weirdly gets the Yanks. He's not. Too, he's up and down, but he can get pretty solid. Man. Yep. Like Rodriguez, he can, he, he's thrown at least two, one or two hitters. Where I don't think they've won the games either. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the crazy part. Right. Um, but, I, I mean, as far as the, the Indians, I, I only knew of their starting pitching being really, really good. Didn't know how, to the extent of how yep. injured they were. Yep. But I can definitely see some sort of upset now and again. It's a five-game series. Sure. Maybe it's, it goes the full five. Yep. And they got to win it in Cleveland. But if, if that happens, then it's like there's more pressure on the Red Sox, I think. What are your thoughts on home field advantage? Uh, it can be great. I mean, yep. but if a, if a team's a good team, it doesn't matter. That's how I, I think, think the Red know. Sox are. I mean, they were pretty split with how they did on the road versus home. Some yeah. years they're better at home versus on the road. The one thing, yes, record aside, they're about equal, but they definitely do hit better at Fenway Park. Sure. So that's going to be something to watch. Hopefully they can get the job done in Cleveland. The good thing and is they to play Dean. At the Red Sox too. are four no four and two against the Indians this year. Oh, all right. so they do have the upper hand. They have got their wins yeah. uh, opening day. That's where they face the Indians. In case you uh, oh, forgot I do about remember, that. Yeah. And then we had a game. I think it was. And it was uh, a rain delay. It was a rain, rain game. It rain was in sep- it was um, September September oh, okay. Labor Day. Oh. Labor Day was the day we had uh, yeah. one of the bigger games of the year that the Red Sox got a win, and that's what started that win streak. Oh, there you go. Remember that five-city tour in like four days? I, yes, yes, I do actually. Yeah. That's what that was. So I, that led off with the yeah. Indians, so a job well done to them. And they actually, I remember during the middle of the season when they had a chance to get two out of three or three out of three. Yep. I think they dropped one because of a questionable It was a questionable uh, play. Yeah, I yep, think it was. Questionable yeah. call on Farrell. Yeah. Hopefully, questions aside, that they'll get their job done. We hope to be sitting here on our next episode talking about how great the Red Sox have been in the first round of play. Yeah. Uh, for now, I, uh, we want to make sure that you enjoy these games. Again, TBS has the Red Sox series. You want to make sure you tune in there. Yeah. Uh, anything else before we wrap it up? No, I just enjoy the It's a rarity now. Playoffs. It's a yeah. rarity these days. Enjoy the playoffs. Yeah, they're great, man. I mean, the one-game playoffs are awesome. Enjoy. Enjoy. Phil, thank you for joining us on Face the Facts. Thank you for having Just me. Just want to let you know, next time that you join us, we will be having a celebration for 10 years of Face the Facts fun. So thank you all for the many years that you've put up with me and mm-hmm. for all the guests that have been on here. We will uh, be celebrating next time we're here, hopefully with a Red Sox win. Mm-hmm. I'm Nick Face. We'll see you next time on Face the Facts. Good night. Mm-hmm.